good morning. This is Richard Shu, host of Shu Untied. Uh, this morning, I'm very pleased to have with me as my guest, David Chang, who's a partner at Nixon Peabody. David, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Richard. So, David, you've got one of the more interesting cross-border uh, international practices I've come across. I heard you speak the other day. It was really impressive. But let me start by asking you, uh, what, what made you decide to go to law school in the first place? Um, well, it wasn't, it definitely was not planned. I, I was actually a pre-med um, during uh, <laughs> early years of my college. And I think the end of it was I, I was sort of, I got tired of the lab, the lab work. Um, and I didn't see myself working in the lab going forward. Uh -huh. So I looked at my choices and I realized oh, law school is something I could explore. Huh. Um, so that's that's how I ended up in law school. Did you go so far as to even apply to medical schools or take the MCAT or you didn't even get that far? No, no. I did take the uh, the GRE back then thinking I might go to a graduate school uh -huh. and eventually um, I ended up going to law school. I, I realized I didn't want to teach. I didn't really want to be in the research area. So um, probably leaving science was best. Yeah. Um, I actually completed my biological science major uh, pretty much within two and a half, three years. Oh, wow. And the last year and a half, I uh, focused on my econ major. So mm -hmm. I doubled. Um, mm -hmm. That's why. I, so I sort of left science behind me. So when you went to law school, did you have any idea what kind of lawyer you were going to be? I have an I had an idea of what kind of law I didn't want to be, <laughs> <laughs> and the reason is I took a lot of I, I did a lot a number of internships, worked at nonprofit, had some um, experience in, for example, paternity lawsuits, family law, and realized immediately I did not want to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very very stressful, uh -huh. um, and then I worked at a small firm in the city part-time I was in law school uh, and they did a lot of different type of work including personal injuries but also asbestos lawsuits and it was a lot more interesting to me so I realized you know uh, potentially and they, they also were involved in a number of litigations so I realized you know litigation private practice was something I could consider uh -huh. um, but then I was very lucky because um, I got accepted into the uh, DOJ honors program uh -huh. Um and went to uh the lived in D.C. for four and a half years oh. working for DOJ. Oh, huh. so. huh, interesting. And then what happened after that? Then you went to private practice. What kind of practice did you finally just settled in on? So when I was at DOJ, I was recruited into the tax division. Hmm. So as part of that, I basically litigated cases representing the United States. Hmm. Uh, related to tax matters. Hmm. So when I I was then recruited by a firm called Mayor Brown uh, back in 2003, and uh, and then I went into their tax controversy group. Hmm. So for for many many years, I was a tax lawyer uh, hmm. working hmm. Uh, working on uh, tax controversy matters. And how did you um, how first, did you and how did you like that? I, I really liked it. It was it was very interesting. Um, it's actually, um, um, you know, in any type of business transactions, there are always going to be tax issues. Totally. So it opened up a lot of doors for me. Mm. Um, so I definitely, if I had to repeat all of this, I would do exactly the same thing. Hmm. Interesting. Highly technical, right? Tax, I mean, it's a very technical sort of area. Yeah, definitely very, very technical, especially... Yeah. When I was in the tax controversy, I was in the tax planning lawyer, but in the tax controversy, mm -hmm. uh, there are, you know, besides the regs, uh, you, you look at case law. Um, so it was definitely very complex. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so then where did you take your practice from there? I, and then in I, I joined Nixon in 2008 mm -hmm. and uh, I, I joined Nixon in their uh, San Francisco office. And initially, it was to uh, help them expand the West Coast tax practice, mm -hmm. uh, and then also 
looking at um, China practice, but China practice at the time was really secondary mm-hmm. uh, because when I joined Nixon, Nixon, I believe only recently had opened the Shanghai office mm. um, and there really wasn't much there at the time. Mm. Um, and I think it was about a year when I was at Nixon, I was asked to uh, to take the lead in the China practice. Mm. And at that point, I think in my career, I had already started bringing in business where Clients were coming in, uh, asking us for assistance, not just in the tax, but in various issues. And many of those clients were from Asia, from China. Mm-hmm. So at that, so it was not, it wasn't that difficult to take on that uh, that role. But uh, I knew right off the bat, I didn't want to just simply be managing that position right. in the sense that you know just a management role. But I really wanted to expand um, my 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 business as well and bring in interesting clients with interesting work. So what is your practice now? Are you, you know, half, half Chinese and U S clients, mostly Chinese clients, how describe your mix of clients these days? I think, okay. So it's definitely a hundred percent cross border. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't even think of a matter where it's purely domestic. Mm -hmm. Um, And in the beginning, I would say a, a lot of that work came from China, mm-hmm. but I think as everyone knows, that's sort of has spread out to different countries in Asia, not just right. China, right. particularly given China's economy right now. Right. Um, but, you know, I, uh, um, the, I think the work right now are coming not just from China, but also from other countries in Asia, including um, Japan, Singapore, uh, Southeast Asia is coming, mm. is becoming very active. Mm. But I also work with clients that are going into Asia, for example, into China. And that is still something that is happening right now, despite, you know, the U.S.-China relationship. Oh, interesting. And what kind of work are you doing for these clients? It's more than tax, I assume. Yeah, it's definitely more than tax. But tax does come into play, uh, definitely, particularly when a client that is not just in not just in technology, but even any client that has any type of IP when they're going cross border, there's always the transfer pricing issue that can that could come up. So mm-hmm. tax is always something that come into play. But a lot of times it's uh, mergers and acquisitions, capital market work. It could be litigation, um, mm-hmm. and it's sort of all over the place. It's not. I, I would say it's not industry sensitive. It's not uh, issue sensitive. It's more like when you have a company and you're going to expand into a different country, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be looking at a number of different issues. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like you you really broaden your practice expertise across a lot of different things. Yeah, I, I think, I, and I think that's a that's a must if you're trying to. Um, develop uh, a practice in Asia uh, where you're bringing in clients from Asia into the U S um, because it's not, it's, and that's a diff- that's a key difference between U S clients and Asian clients because U S clients, they understand, Hey, this is your expertise. This is what you, we should be asking you about. And, and then we will ask another lawyer about different things because mm-hmm. that's their expertise. Mm-hmm. But in Asia, I think a lot of times when you're dealing with a CEO or a founder or a chairman, they um, they expect, hey, we're going to come to you. We're going to expect you can answer questions about franchising, questions about employment, questions about IP. They, they know you might not be the person with the expertise. You might have a team behind you. Yeah. But from their perspective, you are the relations person. And so we want, we're coming to you and then you can go and get your answers and come back to us. So that's, um, I think that's a key difference. If you tell the client in Asia that, Hey, look, we'd love to help you, but I'm not really the right person. You, you're going to turn off that client very quickly (laughs) because that's not what the client wants to hear. Yeah. Well, you mentioned your work is now expanding to other countries in Southeast Asia or in Asian countries. What are some of the countries you're also working with these days? So Singapore has been very, very active mm-hmm. and has been keeping us very busy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think Singapore has sort of become the hub 
for Southeast Asian countries. Mm. Um, so when you're in Singapore, you're dealing with clients perhaps from India, um, from Thailand, from Malaysia. Um, so uh, from our perspective, I think it's been really good uh, because uh, we've been able to uh, work with different companies uh, from different countries that might have a base in Singapore and then from there coming to the U.S. Yeah, interesting. Um, and then we've obviously also worked with uh, other countries as well, like Japan. Um, and then uh, Vietnam has also been very active. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say right now, I, I know that a lot of advisors, a lot of entrepreneurs are in Vietnam because mm-hmm. uh, it's almost very much like China 20 years ago. So mm-hmm. a lot of opportunities uh, and people are going there to explore. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like the, the cross-border practice really worked out well for you. I mean, it doesn't sound like it was your initial plan, but it sounds like it worked out pretty well. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Um, and I think having the, you know, the capability to speak Cantonese as well as Mandarin and then English um, has helped a lot. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. When you retire, will you go to, will you ever consider going back to medical school? <laughs> No, no, <laughs> no, no. It's funny because uh, my daughter, who will be starting at UCLA this fall, uh, she is uh, thinking about pre med, uh-huh. and I, I tell her it's a really long road if you decide <laughs> to go that route. Uh, so you may want to just think about, you know, think twice before you decide to do that. Well, David, this has been a fascinating conversation. I've had you on my list of people to talk to for a long time, so I really appreciate your taking the time to share your story with me. Thank you, Richard, and thanks for having me. This is Richard Chu and David Chang. Thanks.